What is it like to walk into something new, to not know what to expect, to always be the person on the other side of the door? Imagine it's the first day of school in your new classroom as a teacher and you have that nervous excitement about what the school year might bring, but then imagine that's every day. In my experience, this has been the nature of my work as an early childhood mental health consultant. It's also the nature of one of my favorite TV shows. If you're familiar with the Food Network, maybe you've seen the reality-based cooking show Chopped. On the show, a group of contestants walks into the Chopped kitchen and they're prepared to be unprepared in a sense. They know that they're gonna be presented with unknown ingredients, many of them uncommonly used to prepare a meal and that don't typically go together. Think of green tea leaves and baby octopus in an appetizer, ground coffee and popcorn in dessert. The four ingredients are presented at the beginning of each round in mystery baskets. As they cook, contestants have access to a pantry and fridge full of reliable staples that can help them prepare their dish. At the end of the show, the winner is the contestant who uses innovation and creativity to reinvent the mystery basket ingredients while also utilizing familiar cooking techniques and skills. And again, this was the position I found myself in as an early childhood mental health consultant. Entering into a home childcare program or a daycare center, forming meaningful partnerships with early care providers and hoping to make an impact by drawing from my past experience as an early childhood educator and using it to connect to the new ingredients in front of me. Part of what makes CHOP so entertaining is watching the contestants figure out what to do with these challenging, unfamiliar ingredients. And one of the most commonly used challenging ingredients on Chopped is the cactus pear. When you hear it at first, it doesn't sound too appetizing or look too appetizing either. You think of a cactus, something spiky, prickly, and if you've never tasted it before, you'd have no idea what to expect. So cooking with it could be even more intimidating. But when I did my research, what I found is that when you cut open a cactus pear, it reveals this really vibrant red color and has a deliciously sweet taste. An ingredient that could provide you with exciting challenges and break you out of what you typically cook, but you have to give yourself a little time to figure out what to do with it. In our work in early childhood mental health consultation, we all have our cactus pears, something unexpected that stumps us that we don't know what to do with. Maybe it's coaching in a program that has trouble following their daily schedule. Maybe it's that feeling of being cooped up with a group of energetic children who haven't had any outdoor playtime in over a week. Maybe it's observing providers repeatedly telling infants and toddlers to share their toys. So what do we do with our cactus pears? What do we do when we open our baskets, open the door and feel stumped or overwhelmed? I'm gonna give you my recipe. I even have an acronym for it. You have to act fast. Imagine it's your first consultation visit. You've walked into a home child care program. You know you only have eight sessions between now and when the weather turns to build relationships with the early care providers and children, collaborate and make an impact. What do you do first? You notice there's no designated cozy corner. Some of the books on the bookshelf are ripped. The children are doing a lot of hitting and crying. Nothing too earth shattering in an early childhood environment, but when you put it all together in a new place, it feels overwhelming. Where do you go from here? When you open up your basket to find a cactus pear, what do you do first? Find your flavor. You can start the consultation process by asking yourself one question. What is one thing I can do that addresses and supports child development and decreases caregiver stress. I wanna say that again. What is one thing I can do to address and support child development and at the same time, decrease caregiver stress? In the kitchen, what do I want this dish to taste like? Do I want sweet? Do I want salty? The details follow later. Add cinnamon, vanilla, chocolate sauce. But the first thing we have to do is figure out what flavor we're going for. Sometimes providers will tell you what they wanna work on. 
The children don't sit at story time. It's too hard to get them to leave the playground when it's time to go. But I also invite you to find your flavor by observing. Observing to find moments of engagement and connection between the providers and the children. When did you see the provider make a choice that supported child development? Many times providers have such strong moments with their children during simple daily routines like diapering or waking up from nap time, and they don't even realize it. When they're looking at the children, giving them eye contact, smiles, and nurturance, they might not see that as a choice they made to build the child's brain, but just another part of their day. Or observe to find times when the provider chose a developmentally appropriate activity that the children connected to. Talk to the provider about what you observed. How did you feel when you and Jacob were smiling at each other at the changing table? What do you think made him happy in that moment? Or, I love that song you chose at circle time. What gave you the idea to sing it? What do you think the children like about it? From there, you can learn more about the caregiver's individual style and think together about ways to expand on what they're doing to engage the children in their care. Okay, so you found your flavor. The next step, is to access your pantry and fridge. As I mentioned, the pantry and fridge are fixed elements on Chopped, always available to contestants, regardless of the changing ingredients in the mystery baskets. So what I wanna offer is that for early childhood mental health consultants, we also have a pantry and fridge. Our colleagues, our trusted mentors, the people in our lives that understand what we're going through when we walk into these situations in our work and that can help us, that can guide us through them. Our pantry and fridge are particularly important in consultation because a lot of our work is done by ourselves and we don't have someone there to hold up a mirror and talk to us about our work. So keeping in mind ways that you can access these important people, even when they're not with you. Is there something powerful they said, a mantra, a phrase of encouragement you can repeat to yourself in a challenging moment? Can you send an email or text to a colleague right after a session when the details are fresh in your mind? Channeling or reaching out to sources of support will remind you that you're not alone in this work and also helps you empathize with your providers as you feel what it's like to be coached. Here's a picture of some of my colleagues that have been my pantry and fridge over the years. Okay, here it comes, start cooking. Don't worry, it's just a start. It's not the whole recipe. At this point, you've observed enough to have a sense of how the day flows and in which ways your insights and collaboration with the provider could be useful. However, for anything that can be addressed, keep in mind how the provider perceives it. The provider's perception of what is a problem or which aspect of their work could be enhanced is the most important thing. For example, if you think cleanup time is terribly chaotic, but the provider doesn't share that experience or feeling, this is not an area to start cooking in. However, if the provider wants to focus on a child with behavior challenges, but you don't perceive the child's behavior to be problematic, it's, a good, it's still a good idea to explore with the provider. What is their experience of being with this child and start there? As you learn more, about what it's like for the provider to spend their day with this child, you can still hold your flavors and recipes in mind. Mm, maybe some unstructured physical play time and use of first then contingencies during transitions would decrease the challenging behaviors. More outdoor time, two cups, mornings before transitions, three tablespoons mixed together. In the start cooking phase, having some uninterrupted time to speak with the provider is key. As you get to know them, ask what they find challenging about their work, what they enjoy about their work. This is what's ultimately gonna guide your work together, why they think something challenging is occurring. This is really where you get to start putting your ingredients together. Again, you as the consultant may have some hypotheses about why a child is having a hard time coming to circle, why a parent comes in the room looking at their cell phone, but if your why doesn't match the provider's why, 
take some more time to listen, get to know them, and perhaps go back to the drawing boards with your recipe. So here's the last ingredient. Tell your story. One of the things I love most about Chopped is all the storytelling that happens when the contestants are getting ideas for how to use the mystery basket ingredients. Take an ingredient like venison, for example. The contestant sees venison in the basket. They think, what can I make with this? I guess I could use the meat grinder, maybe meatballs. And then all of a the sudden, they're right back in their grandmother's kitchen having spaghetti with homemade sauce and meatballs for Sunday night dinner. And they're able to take the story, this memory, and recreate it in their dish, drawing on what we know has worked, what we know tastes good, what we know hits all the right notes can help us when we're in uncharted territory. So as a consultant, what I come to find most successful is sharing stories. The way I felt when a child who challenged me was absent that day. My favorite circle time songs, moments in my personal life when I implemented behavior management strategies for children with adults instead. Telling stories can be a more natural way to share what you know and can be a great way to share a laugh, lighten the mood, add a burst of sweetness. So there you have it. I hope this recipe will be helpful to you. And maybe the next time you're lying down on the couch, flipping through channels on TV, you watch a few minutes of Chopped. I hope you think not just about food, but about reinvention and the steps it takes to get you there. Thank you.